<laughs> All right, what is today? Today is Tuesday, April 7th, 2015, and we just have a random hangout evening now in uh, United States Central Time, 8.50, almost 9 p.m. Hi, everybody. Hi, uh, Adriana. Hey. Hi. Guru Dan. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Sean. Hey. Hi. Tyler. And now everybody is silent. Please talk. Please. Talk. <laughs> We're all just happy to see you, Max. Ah, thank you. I'm happy to mm. hear you. And yeah, Sean is shining. Sean is great. I want that <laughs> the transformation as well. That's my favorite color scheme. Yeah, I it's an app. I, I will click on Sean. Here it is beautiful. Yeah. Hey, so I just got done watching the webinar from Saturday, and that was pretty awesome about, like, Tesla. Yeah. yeah that was some excellent stuff. It was wonderful. Yeah. Now there's people in the world working on, like, Tesla's coils. Yeah, somewhere but in he, Europe. you know what's interesting? He was talking about teleportation from the point of view of a machine. Uh huh and I'm looking at well, teleportation just, from the point of view of a human body being able to do that. He's talking about, like, because, okay, like, the 3D reality can be manipulated differently than, like, the higher level. Like, when I see the Akashic Records, it's, like, energy, you know? But, yeah. like, the 3D reality is, is the result of the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records are, like, film that consciousness comes down through and it manifests in 3D reality. So like, but he's talking about manipulating 3D reality like yeah. That's like that's like fourth dimensional technology. Like fourth dimension is still physical. Yes. Yes, it is. But you know, when I was asking him about vibration because each human is vibration and we can connect to it. That's when I do my Hathors. I know I'm connecting to a certain vibration of sound, a tone that heals or that, uh, you know, either emotionally, physically, whether it's water, trees, air, whatever it is. Okay? I know there's a vibration. And even with the human body, there's a vibration. That's why there's an effect. Um, so I'm wondering. How is it possible to, while I was asking about the teleportation in a human aspect, aspect while using toning? It seems like theoretically you could teleport without any sort of devices at all. But That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I know. I know you're thinking that. That's a higher dimensional thought, though. That, that concept is higher dimensional than what he's talking about. Like, do yes. you understand how high we are, really? Those thoughts are, like, that's like courts... You know, like, like I think I, I could go from Miami to like freaking Egypt <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> you gotta see that sort of experience. I think like that's a quasi physical experience. Like that's like a Bashar entity type experience. Like Bashar is up there. Like that's what I'm saying. In order to ascend properly, we can't just go with our minds. That's why Tucker always says ground out because we need to ground in quantum theory and fractal geometry in because that is. Everything can be, mathematics is just the Akashic Records explained mathematically. It's just a 3D explanation. But you know That's what, what he said. Jump is. You know what he said, though? The crystals. He yeah. says the crystals are five times as powerful as anything he was thinking right. about. And think about Bashar. Bashar uses crystals, don't, doesn't he talk exactly. about his... Exactly. But what I'm saying... Is we can't, we can't. He was even saying, he's like, you can't handle the crystal information. You can't even fathom that in your three D. In his world, the people could not handle the crystal information. The crystal information is actually coming to us. If you notice, it's just we're filling it out. It seems. I mean, but look like, at Justin. Justin like creates grids like crazy. <laughs> like, what was that? I say, look at Justin. He creates grids like crazy. It's just telling him what to do. And I'm coming up with different ideas and whatnot with my crystals and what to do with them. You know? And it's but five he, times as powerful as anything Tesla ever thought to do at, at his right. time. 
what Tesla's doing is he's taking these higher dimensional thoughts that he's quote unquote out getting from these higher dimensional energies and he's grounding them into a 3D level and he's like creating three dimensional versions of a fourth dimensional idea. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. I'm just looking at this in such a crazy way for like you know, like if what he's like really I'm not qualified to even like we need someone who's like studying electrical like engineering and who's studying Tesla to like yeah. like take I'm that information by from what he said on Saturday. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Because <laughs> like I, I don't have any background science scientific right. like I don't have that sort of experience. I really don't. Um I'm going from just a feeling of what's coming to me. That's what I'm saying, Sarah. Y'all, like, no one here realizes how high they really are. I, I feel. I feel that if you realized how high you were, you would ground out because y'all are fucking high. Like, vibration, <laughs> what you're talking about is not three-dimensional. You know what I mean? You're talking about perceiving energies and shit. Like, well, that's what's happening in my reality. I know. I understand that, but, like... Sarah, what would happen if you focused one of your tones through a crystal tower? I haven't tried that yet. I have no idea. Uh, but I know something freaking awesome. What if you began focusing a tone through, I mean, visualizing through a crystal and then see what I the just, crystal I be to it? I began doing that with my crystal. I started speaking... Um, Singing, that is, to my crystal with the tonings, uh, at least for the last two days. And I'm filling it out, and they're very happy. <laughs> so, it's something I'm going to continue to do to see what happens. So check this out. Okay, if, if the crystal is you, right, the crystal is just you in a one-dimensional state. It's like... Wait, no, 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 no. The crystal, you heard him, he said the crystals are like the heart of Gaia. So it's Correct. even more powerful than you believe a one-dimensional state to be. Well, I'm not saying that's less powerful. Like, Mother Earth is balling, but it's <laughs> like, the way I see it, the way I see it is like God is like everything, and then there's like these filters, and it like the more filtered you are from God, like this is a more filtered version. This is like less of God than we are. We're like more. We have like creativity, cognition, like. So this is if this is us, and this is just a lower manifestation. This is manifestation right here. My consciousness is projecting this into a hologramic state in 3D reality. So how can you use this to look upwards? You know what I'm saying? Like. It seems like this holds me into a 3D because state. Because all right? this one and one is all. You can use that to look upwards. You can use but it to it, look downwards. Guys, I don't even think that's a lower manifestation. I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly. maybe a lower density, but it's density. still God in itself. And, it, and, it, so, and awareness, too. Yeah. It's, it's not a lower manifestation. It's just, a, you know, it doesn't have the same type of awareness as we do. Correct. I, I or it could have have the same type of awareness, we're just not really aware of what they are, or what they can hold. No, we do not have the same perception. Like yeah, this, we just don't have the same perception. Like, you wouldn't explain like how the mailman delivers mail to this rock, because that would be... This rock only knows, like... It's just trying to see upwards. It's trying to see what we are. It's like, what is the, what are these aliens up here doing? Because I don't understand them. In the same way that we look up to the aliens, or like, we don't understand this, we're trying to understand it, you know? Mm-hmm. But like, but I understand it's also a personal experience. Like the experience that you have when you awaken, it's it's very personal to you and your understanding of the reality that you're living in. That, that's right. yes. That's where it goes quantum. That's where I can't figure it out because everyone's reality is different. So it's like, that's where my 3D mind just shuts down and like, <laughs> can't comprehend that. You know, I can't process that thought. I don't have enough CPU. I need to like upgrade my CPU, my RAM. <laughs> yeah, but you you don't give yourself enough credit. You are upgrading every day. <laughs> You're right. But like at a certain level, physical reality. Like if you could have an extrasensory community, like full blown telepathy. 
I'm not sure where that thought was going, but it's that's incredible. You have to be on a super high level for that. Like what Takur is doing, like Takur, if this is true, like Takur is an incredibly, I mean, she can do some crazy stuff. She can look at, she can look at all the different lives she's living in, in any given moment. She has to be able to do that in order to be channeling through Jim. Like I think, I don't know, like these videos that she keeps talking about, I'm not sure if this is even a physical video. Like I think that is a concept that maybe perhaps is not being channeled correctly, like maybe we can't even really comprehend what they're saying. Maybe what if they're projecting to our collective consciousness so collectively we're like reading this energy sort of and not even seeing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I think these would be physical videos. <laughs> because otherwise how else would we, would they're we be able with to find them? Though. They're, they're like... They're seeing the Akashic Records at all times. Even Kronos yeah. talks about the Akashic Records. Like, but in order to do what they're doing, they're constantly connected to well, that. Well, listen to this. And I just posted some videos of this guy named Andrew Bartsitz, who calls himself the Galactic Historian. I don't know if yeah. you ever heard of him. Yep, you said it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and he was talking about the Akashic right. Records. And he, type it, type it. as a human being, is able to read them just verbatim. You can see them. They're like, they're archives. They're yeah. Just, just well, you you had your experience the other day with it. I've had it several, I've seen it a few times. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, it's it's mathematical in a way, but it's like just archives of thought patterns. Like, you can take every thought and just sort of swipe it off of, you know, the projector, and you can see your reality without that thought in it. Like, it's crazy. It's hard to explain. It sounds crazy. Like, the more I go into it, the crazier it sounds in a three-dimensional level because it doesn't translate properly. Well, that's like when they talk about the libraries and things. The libraries, right. The planet, uh, planet Earth is the library for Earth. The sun is the library for the solar system. There's other libraries, and that usually the beings that come to visit, they'll they'll check the library. They'll stop at the library first and check it out. And go, do I want to yeah. go out there or what? You know? So they have access to all the information that's ever been amassed from our little spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you're giving me some crazy ideas. I feel that like the like archives are like like we're the result of it. Does that make sense? Like it yeah. is every, it, it's it's us on a higher level, like it's us all connected. It's every thought like in reality. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to Max, that. what do you think of all of this? Uh, you yeah. gave me like uh, the topics, I guess, hundreds of topics, so I can pick and choose. <laughs> um, so I think Bashar was asked about, um, you know, can uh, the animal or a stone be in um, in our level of uh, consciousness? And he said, sometimes, if they kind of take on our way of thinking, like uh, if an animal becomes so much involved in our life and uh, gets a relationship so we bring it up to, like bring a dog up to, to our level so the, the dog starts thinking on our level then they come to our frequency whatever how you, whatever you call it 3.5 and same thing maybe with the stone if you have a relationship with the stone or if it is a, um, some kind of a stone where people come and it's um, a sacred stone, then it also bring gets you know gets their vibration and stores it and gets into our level of vibration, just to you know to get get some some of a perspective. Of course, I don't know. Um, so sh who is that? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so Hi. you were talking about um, um, crazy stuff, right? Crazy meaning. There is tons of information around uh, the Akashic record, which has everything. And where does where do we fit here, right? I think uh, it's like maybe a computer game or a card game or a Monopoly game, where you know everything you can see from certain perspective. You see, you see everything, but then you kind of limit yourself in many many ways until you. You're a lonely, lost person, and and uh, you make choice, and then you you and and also you have time. You play with time, so you 
you don't know what will happen next so so you have you make choices and and you pick from these akashic records you pick and to your consciousness to your physical mind comes only that little of information here and there and then it becomes uh, our 3d life that's my take and uh, you know I wish I knew more but 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 you know to, to me random things happen and I, I I'm always puzzled what happens to me it just you know it just doesn't make a lot of sense at the moment <laughs> it's like when I and that makes sense a hundred percent like whenever I saw it I wasn't able to like go anywhere in my Akashic record and look at anything I couldn't tell you about like a past life I didn't see it like that I saw it like I was looking at it like an architect like I could see the blueprint of like where things were and how the mechanism it's like a quantum computer of projection of consciousness like that's basically what I saw like a computer that consciousness is projecting through and manifesting you know now that you're mentioning that uh, have you guys seen the interstellar movie yeah all the way like at the end when he's like in that library of the yes. moments it's yeah. kinda yes. like what you're describing to me I don't know it came that's up in funny. my mind Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the different alternate realities there. Mm -hmm. Anybody up to Chandelin? Mm -hmm. Sean, uh, you, you are silent. Do you want to speak? Anything that uh, touched you most? Or you like to speak something? And uh, right now I'm just feeding off the collective energy. Huh. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Max, what ideas do you have for like doing channeling webinars? Like, what ideas are you thinking about? I'm about lost. What answers I'm you lost. want to get? I'm lost. I'm lost. Um, uh, I felt guided until recently, and now I feel that you know. All roads are open. I'm stuck, so all roads are equal. That's good. I, I don't know where do I want to go, but um, it's actually a good place to be. Yeah, I want to just to to do something significant and interesting. I guess that. Yeah, I want to do something important and helpful to others. Uh, one of the thoughts was that we certainly need to publish a few books. Just whatever Jim channeled, it's already. Typed a lot of things already typed. So uh, transcribes. How about we just assemble those books and publish them for free, electronically for free? And uh, Lulu has uh, Lulu.com has a service. You just upload it there, and then they sell the book, and will whatever money comes, whatever pennies come for that, um, can go to Jim. So I guess that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to speak to more channelers. I want to do one on one or one on two or two on one sessions where um, we'll just uh, cross examine different channelers and see what what different channelers say about say similar things. Oh, yes, like, great. And uh, yes, and um, uh, when you said yes, my my little tiny thought was was broken. So when we, sp all right, go ahead. I, I will I will come back to my 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 thought. Go ahead. No. Oh no! I was just saying like that's great. Like whenever I was watching this uh, webinar on Saturday, I was thinking when Moses was there, I was like, man, we need like a uh, like a professor of religions, you know, like Reza Aslan, to like, hey, yeah, verify this. This all happened. Like, I mean, how can once it starts coming in like that? I mean, once you can channel anyone from history and get proof and actually have someone validate it like Tesla, someone who studies Tesla's work like does Jim know about like quarks and shit like that you know what I mean like um, no I don't, th I don't think so uh, as, I, I, I was able to kind of get a little glimpse onto what Jim knows what about Jim knows and it's, uh, it's all what you know what's, what is in the popular culture not more than that he doesn't know physics beyond Popular culture. So, so I was very surprised when just a, I was very surprised when te, I know some unique things which are not in popular culture about Tesla and about uh, Moses and whatever they said was in line with what I knew. I was very happy with that channel. Uh, <coughs> Sarah you wanted to say something. I have a sneaking suspicion when I heard about the court situation 
All right. And the sneaking suspicion is that quartz, whatever he's describing there, because I have no idea what it is, never even heard of it, hmm. but whatever he was describing there has something to do with the teleportation situation without a machine, just using crystal and the human body and thought. All right. Uh, quarks are one type of matter particle. Most of the matters uh, we see around is made from protons and neutrons, which are composed of quarks. So this is sub subatomic particles, sub uh, sub elementary. So elementary particles, you know, and this would be sub elementary particles. And I don't know these quarks are well understood by physicists, but basically he says it is useless to look at atoms or uh, neutrons, electrons, and protons, which we really know well. We have to look in uh, the units, which are just one level below. It's like one another. So it's we have to go one step below the known part. Is that quantum, or uh, no? No, quantum is is uh, usually is proton, electron, uh, photon. That would be quantum. So if you break the quantum in subquantum particles, that you get uh, quarks. Uh, so he was talking about subquantum particles. So quantum is something which we can measure very easily. You can even, even see it with naked eye, one quantum, sometimes. Uh, but um, amplified, obviously. But but you can you can really, you know, it's easy. With with electronics like that, with an with electronic mouse, you can see those things. <laughs> but you know, if you go with, um, with sub-elemental particle, then, then it would be next level down is quark. And he was talking that quark is... Um, or he, uh, Jim, somebody asked if quark is circular or it is quantum. That's what Ravi asked. And he said, no, 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 it's random. And when he said random, it comes up with the idea of zero-point energy. Remember that. Zero-point energy is when scientists take this chaos, the noise in the, in the universe, and if you filter it properly, if you tunnel it properly, you get free energy from that. And people say that there are already devices on Earth invented by humans which use a zero, zero, zero point energy to produce free, um, free, free power. So yeah, it all kind of resonated. I, you know, when, I, when we don't know what quarks are, we, we don't have experiments to, gr uh, to grasp them, to use them, then whatever he says, it's nice, but you know, I, I miss that connection how to use it. So you need more background, background in uh, quantum physics to really and right. experimental quantum, quantum field to really use it. Right, yeah. As you were speaking, I was actually getting a vision of the cells in the human body. Mm -hmm. um, think about blood cells in, in, in the entire body and seeing them vibrate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, something's coming in just now, like... I literally just saw my body as liquid and the cells vibrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the picture we see. Yeah, that's very true. DNA is the key. DNA is the crystal. DNA is very, very proper crystal, very well structured crystal. So um, most of the transformation between the higher dimension and the our dimension comes, you know, in our bodies comes through through DNA. Uh, I guess oh, that's crazy. That's crazy, Max. I mean, that's that's you know that comes in many channelings. I just saw some, yeah. I just saw some I hadn't seen before, like what you're saying. Cause yeah, like so, man. It's insane how the whole thing works. You know, it's like a fucking game. It's like <laughs> the best video game ever made. Um, like, <clears throat> what's that, Max? I just wanted to ask Guru Dan if he wants to speak. Well, I was just <coughs> remembering. <coughs> oh, the hang on, just a second. I was just remembering, you know, this whole Planet Earth game, you know, the whole incarnational cycles, etc. You know, as eternal beings. You know, we just um, we we don't just hang out in space and, and and think about how cool we are. You know, we we needed a challenge, right? We can't just hang around and wow, I'm a cool consciousness and 
you know, it's like um, it's like that crocodile Dundee. You know that he meets the gang. So, well, did your gang do anything cool? No. Oh, well, you guys should do something cool. So here, you know, were these pieces of consciousness, right? And we needed a challenge. You know, so oh, hey, let's go down to that planet and let's be, you know, a hundred thousand different beings and 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 let's each being be a different piece of the thing and just uh, run amok and run a course and, and see what they do. You know, and then the idea is to be this highly connected being and see how low we can descend and still reconnect with ourselves. And so, like, it's how we, you know, it's a, we challenge ourselves spiritually, you know, how far down can we go and still awaken? And it's just been, like, a really, really, really amazing thing because I've been able to get down pretty far, and I'm amazed I'm even still breathing. And I know there's a lot of other people I see in some of these these failed TV shows and stuff. You know, how do them people even live through that? You know, <laughs> they live through an explosion or fall off a building or something. And it's just, you know, we came here to be challenged. And then it's interesting even the things that we find out about that. You know, well, how did that thing manifest? How did this thing, how does it all work? It's just all so interesting. And I, I don't have the answers, but I still find it very interesting. And I can see why I did it. I know why I incarnated, because it was just exciting. It was just, you can't just sit up in space and, and brag on yourself, oh, I'm a, I'm a great big consciousness over here, you know, <laughs> who's going to believe you? <laughs> you know, you got to go do something. And so we come down here, and then we're waking up. So, wow, this is exciting, you know. And now we're, we're gathering even more information, and we're able to wake up or, or hang out with other people who are waking up, you know. Wow, where did you wake up from? Oh, I woke up out of... I woke up out of wealth, or I woke up out of illness, or I woke up out of uh, hard work, or I woke up out of uh, uh, work in the land, or I woke up out of uh, farming or something, or I woke up out of uh, uh, seamanship, or I woke up through war, you know, and Krishna was famous for you know, awakening through through portions of war, and there's other, you know, the wake, the, all the different. There's no <laughs> limit to what you can awaken out of. It's just, ah, it's all so interesting. So sometimes I don't worry about each and every individual aspect of it. Sometimes I don't need to figure it all out because it's still just so exciting knowing that oh. Well, I awoken from here. I wonder how many other different aspects are awakening. How many, how many other lower aspects have descended of myself? You know that are that are awakening, because they say that you know we're all connected through our, our collective soul families and things like that. So, well, there must be a bunch of us waking up in all kinds of different alternate timelines and stuff. Otherwise, I think you know, and I must be connected to that some way. So, it's like the soul is ascending, you know, I can see it. I don't always understand it, but it's still very exciting. Thank you. Um, well, if, if you were, were in, uh, if you had a choice to come back to this to this reality, would you choose it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. a million times over, because that's just this reality in this frequency range right now. What about this reality in a slightly different frequency range, where maybe I'm a basketball, or maybe I want to be a telephone pole for a while, or maybe be another, you know. It's like Bashar says, you know, we've been every member uh, of the family. We've been the brother, the sister, the mom, the dad. We've been every role. And, yeah, we may have been all of those roles and say, oh, we've been every insect and we've been every animal and we've been every, you know, star in the sky that we see. And, and we may have been all of that, but it's <clears throat> a frequency range in time. We're still in time. You know, I, 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 I have dreams where I've, I've dreamt that, you know, yeah, okay, I, I've come to this awakening, the 2012 uh, shift and awakening, and I, I, there's an awakening where I wake up from um, the corporations that were running things. They kind of let loose of things. They get tired of running things. You know, I, I, there's there's an incarnation where uh, watching the, the people take over and the government kind of give up and go, okay, you guys just kind of have at it, you know, the the incarnation of what's it like to not use money because you don't need it. Everybody just likes everybody, and everybody just kind of walks around and does whatever they want. There's uh, so there's all kinds of cool incarnations that I'd like to. Oh, uh, like so to you want to explore parallel timelines? There's parallel timelines. There's everything. Well, there has to be parallel timelines because everything is right now, right? 
Yeah. So there's, so there's a right now, there's a me, there's, there's a portion of this consciousness that's in another timeline, in another frequency range. Okay, very near this dimension or pieces of this dimension or other aspects of this dimension having other experiences. Okay, so we're, we're in an alternate reality in a parallel timeline, parallel reality, somewhat parallel, not parallel, completely different, but all happening right now. But uh, You see them all, yeah, would I come back again? Oh, yeah, this is the best ride. <laughs> this is the you best know what, ride. one thing to add to it, it's at the end, is it's really just experience and just the, the human experience in itself. We're able to experience duality, like... I don't even know from all the research I've done in channeling and hearing from all kinds of people, you know, any other species that can really embrace that duality in ourselves and we're able to, to live with that. That's, you know, I feel like there's so many species around the earth watching this happening because it's just going to unfold a, a new set of, you know, events in this intergalactic... Because it's a um, very unique thing to exactly. us. Yeah, because you don't yeah. know if your dog has deja vu. You don't know if your cat has deja vu. You don't know exactly. if your pet rat has deja vu. Yeah, you don't know what, what other connections are going on. I'm sure there's connections that are available, but I, I'm not privy to them, or, they, or not yet anyway. But yeah, but you wonder. Yeah, but as far as having that capability, yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty interesting beings now, aren't we? I can see why a lot of you know experiments are being run, and and why and, they want to come. And that's it. what I've heard. Like planet Earth is like your master's degree in in, in everything. You know, well, it's, it's like, like their yeah. heart is called to be. That's like Wendy Kennedy says. Yeah, it's a reality <laughs> show of the universe because everybody's yes. here. Everybody, everything is represented here. The spiders are here. The cats are here. The, the most are dense here. place in the universe. Oh, the water is here. The rocks are here. All these different experiences. You know, and then there's the history of the things. Of things that used to be here. The dinosaurs. The this. The that. The kings. The queens. You know, all kinds of cool stuff going on here. I mean, really, really, it's it's yeah, it's like a death by chocolate milkshake. Of the universe over here, everything, every piece of chocolate's here. <laughs> it's all a different. Very beings, funny. Right? So everybody's coming. <laughs> yeah, are you from Bavaria? No, we're from somewhere else. Oh, well, you're still chocolate. Well, of course we are. You know, the, yeah, let's, invent the, <laughs> let's invent the chocolate crystal, right, and just call it good. <laughs> oh my! Yeah. It's a nice question to ask if it is permitted to. Uh, choose uh, an incarnation in a different timeline. I never heard about incarnations in a different timeline. Somehow, I think it should be possible. But you know, people always say it was in the past, and it seems like it was in our past, in in real sort of this timeline past. From well, what I've heard from Bashar, it, it seems like you can choose. I mean, what, whichever timeline or like planet or incarnation you wanted, like you can choose to do it over again if you wanted it to. That's from exactly. where I'm, I've you know, heard. From all the different channels, they all say the same thing. What? what? That there are different timelines and you can choose which timeline you want to be in, especially in this time period where we're waking up and we're shifting constantly as uh, Roxy via Osipia says, we're shifting a billion times a minute, seriously. And so all of those billion times, all of those billion possibilities, all of those have a reality. And so you're just choosing which one you want to live constantly. Yeah, so, I, have a, I have a thing on that. I, I call it my on-ramp scenario. So your what? My on-ramp scenario. You know what an on-ramp is. You're going down the, you're getting on the highway and you're on the on-ramp and you're picking up speed, right? And you're going, you're getting ready to enter onto the highway. And you get going down the on ramp, and you're trying to get, you know, whatever 70, 80 miles an hour, so that you can merge into traffic. And and say you're on the on ramp, and you don't know it, but you're about to merge into like a semi or something. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't know. You just you, you clench your eyes, and you, you go into like this weird thing with your body, and then you don't hear a crunch, and you don't hear a bang, and you don't hear a thud, and then you look and you finally kind of open your eyes after your days for saying, oh, I didn't have an accident. You know, and you look around and say, wow, I don't even see the truck. Well, there's mm -hmm. another alternate reality where you did have that accident and you're crunched up and you're all still back there. That experience is still back there. That experience mm -hmm. is there. It, there's an incarnation of you that didn't make it onto the highway, your, 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 your road pizza back there from the truck you cut off. 
Well, that's kind of a uh, graphic, but I get your point. <laughs> but, you know, but somehow there are times when we can even crunch time and we can do things and we can yes. jump into another reality because that reality is in a frequency very near the one we're already in and we cannot have an accident. Actually, we we're can doing have, that and we, can, and we do it in all these, all these different variables, billions of times, billions of times a minute, billions of times a second, billions of times. So, and then uh, Ostipius, there's the thing about um, jumping from one timeline to another or mm -hmm. merging. Merging will we'll, we'll have, <coughs> I've actually experienced this when I moved from Missouri to Texas because my Missouri life, I didn't feel like I was really getting anywhere with it. But I had a dream where my Texas life was successful and so I wanted to go into my Texas life. And then, so when Texas became an availability, I went for it. And then the way Ostipius, put it was that I merged I merged into my Texas life so I have memory I have the memory of all the stuff that's happening here but I also have the memory of all the Missouri stuff even though now I'm over here I'm no longer over there I'm in a completely different physical location mm -hmm. but I'm still aspects of the same consciousness yeah so we can merge into are like soul family members or pieces of ourselves if we choose to kind of merge in but it's merging it's not a taking over one or the other it's not so much a step in as it is a merging and I thought that was really interesting because I, I really kind of feel that that's what's going on with me how did I get from point A to point B without merging into something mm -hmm. so the way well, Osipia says that I me, had a Texas me. life going on and then I had yeah, that for, going on and yeah, it was weird you know what, for me, has been the kind of like a, the total opposite, but it's just my personal experience. I actually have experienced that I am like jumping from one timeline to the other and, and not really like, oh, I just did it. It's just that I look back to the choices that I make back then and I don't really have memory of all that stuff. It's like I'm choosing constantly and I'm really, I guess, jumping very fast and I can't pick up on all the memories. They're like kind of gone for me. It's interesting, no. though. Yeah, the, in one timeline will fade in favor of the other timeline that you're on. So yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's weird how it, it's like when you go up to a restaurant and it's really, really good, and then somebody asks you a month later what you had, and it's like, oh, I can't remember what I had. I just remember that it was really good. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just, just like that. How it, how, how it fades. It's weird how the, the even the memory matrix fades and changes and does stuff, and you stay in favor of one or another. It's really weird when... We pick a lane and, and then change lanes. It, it's, uh, I, yeah, it's, it's a bit But terrific. I can understand it now because before I used to think, oh, I have such a bad memory. And now it's like, no, I'm just choosing to constantly jump from one timeline to the other. And I'm just creating more memories. And those are fading away, like you said. Shayan? Welcome, Ayan. Hi, Ayan. Hi. Hello, Hyan. <laughs> he might be getting his microphone set up. <coughs> but yeah, it's lovely discussion. I wanted to show you the the uh, that's the best picture of DNA I found while listening. So that's most most uh, how would I say um, correct image of uh, crystalline image of DNA how it looks and if you see this double helix this uh, red and orange uh, balls they they show the double helix see that mm-hmm two snakes yeah. Yeah. Uh, made of, uh, or orange balls and then in the middle there are blue ball blue and gray balls and these are so-called so and this bases form a very, very nice, very perfect crystalline structure, which, where they kind of, uh, 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 this layers are one on top of another, and that is what it looks like. It is a, a crystal where light can go, and it can go back and forth, kind of forming a, a laser. And if you pump in energy, you would have a laser there, and then this laser could. Mm, uh, accumulate energy and resonate different pieces of DNA could resonate with each other within the body forming um, kind of a chorus of lasers and that looks like it has a capacity to go transdimensionally so that's I think is how 
we are connected to our, to our astral bodies, etheric bodies, and that's how we do, how our physical bodies is, uh, that's the mechanism how our physical body is connected to our spiritual parts. It's like, a, it's like a vibrational threshold. I see what you're saying. It's like at a certain point, the vibrations become so low that they, they've materialized. It's like perception, it's just a perception thing. Like, you're right, I like totally agree with you. It's like a radio. It's like a cell. Yeah. I, have, I have a question. Is there a reason why they chose those colors at, to depict the DNA? Uh, you know, it's uh, the reason is quite obscure. I think it comes from chemistry. Uh, you know, in chemistry, chemists used to color different elements with different colors. I think it comes from chemistry. I think. Um, not more than that. Not more than that. Because I had a strange thought just now that that was created to the different sh for the it different chakras. Oh. Um. I I don't know. Just don't know. Yeah, there's something I want to share. Now that you put that picture in, uh, one of the healing techniques I was given in one of my meditations is basically. Um, I will take all my emotions and pretty much, you know, any kind of emotion that you really want to heal yourself with. And I would imagine like leaving my body as an energy and it will become one of those gray balls that you're just showing there. And that will just disappear on the air. On the air. Interesting. Um, it was just very interesting because when you're pulling the picture and I see those little gray balls and I'm like, oh my God, that's exactly... Mm -hmm. what I picture when I was doing that meditation a while ago. And that's exactly how I actually, um, it's a quick healing technique that I developed for myself, but just wanted to share it, share it with you guys. I think white balls are hydrogen. Uh, I'm pretty sure orange balls are phosphorus. I'm pretty sure the red balls would be oxygens. And possibly blue balls would be nitrogens. And gray most likely are carbon. But um, Yeah. But you know, so there are five. Forgive me if I'm mistaken a, a little bit somewhere. Like, uh, but most likely I'm correct. So well, these well, are the traditional colors that... for these elements. Yes, go ahead. Right, because you mentioned about the carbon, and one of the things that they told me is that since we're moving into our, to get rid of of all that that component in our body, and like work with your life body. So it's like working through those emotions in like that that um, element. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Bashar mentioned once that we are working towards replacing car some of the carbon with silicon, and yes. that uh, raises the vibration. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted to bring up. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, so far, I don't see much silicon in our chemistry. I think we are pretty much carbon-based. <laughs> but uh, even a little bit might change the vibration, yes. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had a message. I think it was very personal. Someone came to me with a personal message, some physical friend. And he, they gave me a message that uh, the sickness come from this order in DNA where DNA loses this per per perfection. So um, aging and sickness come when that nice kind of crystal structure of DNA becomes distorted and healing is restoring this crystalline correct perfect structure. I feel the need to at least say that age and disease, meaning this ease, comes from belief and thought. Belief or relief? Belief. Uh huh. In thought. The entire mechanism of like everyone here is belief. Like the belief system is the mechanism of how this even exists. Yes. Like when you change so your belief you system, can... your belief we... system is mechanically connected to the upper levels. That's the joke. They give the human the, the controller, which is the belief system. And it control. They don't show you what you're controlling. You're controlling this huge thing called your Akashic records or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that it's like mechanically. It's like literally connected energetically. Yes. And so you can 
cause yourself to age and cause yourself to have a disease or a disorder uh, because of a thought pattern or process. Um, and because of that, it can be changed with another thought. This is why you have instances where someone has this disease or this illness and the doctor says, oh, you cannot live, and then all of a sudden, then the next day, whatever it was, has gone away. You know, it can change with the thought and belief process. Yeah, I agree with that. It's like, Adriana, you were saying how you like, okay, you focus, and then you're actually, see, what you're doing is when you change your belief system, when you're saying, like, I'm healing myself, you're, like, you're shifting this belief system and your consciousness is projecting that reality. So when you're rea when you're talking about like jumping realities, what's happening is the projection is just changing. Like that's incredible how this whole thing works, really. Mm -hmm. Like the mechanism of reality. That's something I haven't even thought of, like healing yourself. Like yeah. So okay, Max. So. Can you manipulate frequency manually? Like, what frequency? I know they smash these particles together to get this stuff, right? Or no, no, this is DNA. So yeah, could that's you DNA. mechanically alter the frequency in order to sort of like? I know the government can do that. They could. I've I heard of that. like I've well, right, but like with a tool, with a machine, a three-dimensional. No, machine, without like, a machine, my correct. voice, I do that. But I'm saying, like, the government has, like, astral bases, so I've heard. So if they have astral bases and they have humans on it, that means that they've got to have humans that are able to astral project all the time or something like that, you know? So yeah. they are using some sort of, they, they, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Higher dimensional thoughts are not inaccurate, but it's, it's relevancy. Like, we, this three-dimensional world, you can, you have to ground these thoughts, like, Yes, we can teleport without using machinery, but that is a high-level thought. That is like a fifth-dimensional thought, or like that's like some Bashar shit. We're not at that <laughs> level. We have to raise our frequencies. We have to ascend. We have to create, you know, free energy. Tesla. Those are fractal antennas. Fractal antennas pull energy out of nothing. How do you explain that? That's a fourth-dimensional civilization. Well, the technology is out right now in the three D to do that. True. Really, it's been here mainstream. on this planet since you know. No, it's not mainstream, but we've had it for over fifty years already. True. All true. And this so is... it's just a matter of somebody be, being able to step forward and say, "Hey, I'm going to make sure everyone gets to have this free energy and going through the process of making it happen." Well, see, in the you same know? way that in the same way that the human, okay, each human. Uh, projects their own matrix, everyone's on their own grid, their own universe completely, it, and we're all overlapped. So the collective humanity also is collectively projecting like a, like you can look at everything that's happening in the world and you can see it as, you can interpret the higher level energies of the collective. That's how you can read shit, like look at your life, look at everything in your life and you can see it as like what I call divination, like like knowing what your energy is, knowing your point of attraction. Mm. So collectively, we're also manifesting a collective universe. There's like there's like bubble realities. I think Bashar mentioned that even. Oh, Bart uh, just mentioned the bubble realities, and I just posted those two videos he had. Uh, Interesting. He I mentioned the this. bubble reality. Yes. What's this guy's name again? Spelled out for me. Bert? Andrew Bartsis. A N D R E W B A R T Z I S. Okay. He's Are on you YouTube? That? Yeah, YouTube. But um, I just posted it on my page. Okay. So the correct video is from Buzzcut or something like that. Oh, I'll go to your page. I'll go to your page. Yeah, go to my page and it's on there. So another thing I was thinking of is like, okay, if. If, if we're going through billions of realities every second, then that means that, like, each of those times that a new reality is created, like, the zero-point energy of, like, infinite is going through creation. It's rippling all the way through us, the rocks, 
in both directions, just instantaneously, just bam, manifest everything in existence all at once in a billionth of a second. Like, that is a crazy thought. Now, see, that's just a thought, but, like, is that a higher dimensional perception? Am I seeing it? I mean, I'm seeing it visually, like, in my imagination. Is that what a... You know what I mean? Like, what the hell is this? Um, so, okay. It, you, you it's perception. Questions, that, right? So, <laughs> second question about billion frames per second. Uh, that's Bashar's... Uh, I think what he says, it's, you know, these are all frames, um, so our reality is not continuous, it's... Uh, it's made of frames, and because there is so high frequency, so our uh, frequency on, on the video here is 30 uh, or 25 frames per second. And Bashar says that our uh, real frequency, how we are designed, our world is designed, programmed, is billions. But you see this, um, the change which happens in these billions frames per second is very, very orderly. There are physical laws which we all kind of sign up to, to play by these physical laws. Uh, so, so most of the things, which especially the ones which happen automatically, I think they are happen quite, 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 how do you say, you know, it, you can calculate how the, uh, the kinetics of the, of the pen move. So it's, uh, you know, unless you do conscious change of that, it's, it's kind of pre pretty programmed. And we all play in that physical reality. But of course there are parallel realities and of course you have uh, you, you you sort of you know it's again you know it's it's a model but how I see it it's uh, it's you playing a game in a computer and when you play that game in a computer it has its own rules but uh, yeah there's uh, agreements there's like but, vibrational but, agreements but but you, but of course you know in these days and uh, with a uh, that kind of nature of transformation we have a we have a a way to affect these rules and skip. Uh, I, I have been recently to Matrix Energetics. Uh, have you heard about it? Ma Matrix Energetics? Mm -mm. Uh, uh, by, um, what's his name? Richard. I forgot the last name. Uh, basically, he, he does, you know, magical stuff, transformation, and he says it's all nonsense, and uh, he plays with energies by shifting realities all the time. Uh, he does it on stage, and... Um, he just does miracles on stage, like healing people and stuff. Uh, he's uh, wow. one of the favorite uh, uh, toys is uh, two-point meditation. He speaks nonsense, and he kind of picks at random one point in the, in the space and uh, senses for another point, and when he finds another point, he kind of focuses on them and sh grabs the reality from by these two points and shifts them mentally into a different reality. So, and uh, usually, wow. he's in, because he's a doctor, his intention is to shift from reality where disease is here to mentally to where disease is what? doesn't even exist. And uh, wow. uh, he, he uh, gave an example that it even works on uh, inanimate matter, like cars and stuff. So I, I use it pretty often. If I need to fix something and it is stuck, I just do this two-point meditation and shift the reality where the thing is unstuck, and it works. You know, you just instead, instead of Mexico. working hard, you just you just shift the reality to 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 a different. I uh, you know it doesn't always work, but it's a nice tool to play, and sometimes it works. And another thing you asked. Um, well, oh, hold on, hold on. I, I want to jump on that real yeah, quick. Yeah, like, on. Okay, do you notice that you're focusing your consciousness in a three-dimensional way? You're saying, "I want to manifest this." You know, this to be easier, and then bam, you're going to manifest. See, when you don't ground yourself, all, everyone on this website that is up here in the clouds, they're manifesting higher level things, right? They're manifesting telepathy, all these visual things. But if you ground those energies, you can play. You can be anywhere you want. If you can figure out where you're at, you can manifest upper level stuff, but you're not going to be manifesting 3D. That's why uh, Takur told Noha to ground herself because she's not manifesting because t she wasn't in the 3D. Like, wherever you're projecting, <laughs> it's interesting how I'm seeing this. Okay, I, I remember the name. Richard Barlett, uh, B-A-R-L-E-T-T. -T. Awesome. Matrix Energetics. Uh, and right. he has a whole following now. You know, Chicago has its own uh, Matrix Energetics fun, fun club. Pretty popular. 
Another thing you, you mentioned was, um, uh, is there a technology to change the frequency? Uh, mental frequencies are, you know, our brain is a machine with, which works with different frequencies, like beta waves, theta waves, alpha waves, and so on. So these are changed by uh, so-called entrainment, entrainment, E-N, whatever, trainment. Um, so, you know, you vibrate with certain frequency, but if something pretty strong vibrates with a close frequency but different, you kind of match. It's called resonance. So when, when one fre one power, one one vibration is kind of more clear and stronger, all other vibrations kind of tend to synchronize with it. So. So that's called an entrainment, when one vibration brings the other vibration together. Mm. And it works in music, and it works in all sorts of pulsing. It, 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 on TV, they kind of entrain you in their frequency and thought pattern. Yeah. And in uh, electronic devices, light pulsing, electromagnetic pulsing, it also allows entrainment. So healing therapy is also works for entrainment. Um, uh, Tibetan uh, Tibetan crystal balls and train you too, so they, they work on chakras. Uh, it's not only uh, changes the frequency; it also kind of allows to synchronize and communicate. So if you're a healer, you train, you synchronize with your patient, and then you can send energy when you're connected through the same frequency. You can send uh, kind of information through that. Okay. And that is for uh, that's like Reiki information. Yeah, technical entrainment, but also um, there is a water structure, right? Uh, so one of the healing ways is to change the structure of water and just drink the water, or uh, oh, do rake okay. on water and then drink that water, um, charge the water with prayers, uh, charge the food with prayers. You can put your hands on food and do the prayer before you eat, or when you cook, you do it in a meditative way, so the food becomes uh, healing. Holy shit. Yes. Oh yeah, again some and, good you know, The prayer before before food, be, be, prayer over the wine and bread, I mean that's that's also uh, changing the structure and changing the frequencies. And on that great note I have to leave you guys. You can I can um, continue if, if you like. But I have to go my my my, my family needs me now. Thanks Max. Nice good to chat. Thank you Max. All right. Yes, bye thank bye. you. Bye. bye bye. Thank you, Max. Bye. Oh, he, he has know, to he take it off live. live. Yeah, <laughs> he'll, he'll probably end the thing. We can start on your hangout. Oh, okay. If you want, or we could stay on. Do you want to go to the first hangout and let this yeah, one drop? Yeah, let's go to the first one and let this one drop. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. What? What's happening? Oh, we're going to the the first hangout. Let like this one drop so we can stop recording. Okay. What's the first hangout? It's on the the um. It was Max's first one that he posted, okay. but he was in the wrong, uh, I guess, login page or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Oh, okay. What did I do wrong? Amy, yes, I'm
isumiasha tumanana ha e ikoluiasha tama ikosumiasha ta tumana e peace love light harmony love you all No, that's not.